शुक्लां वरधर विष्णु शशिवर्णम चतुर्भुज प्रसन्नवदनम ध्यानोपात योगेन चित्त पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिरान तोस्म डिर् फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दि स्टडी ऑफ दि योग सूत्र we just started the sadhana pada the second chapter of the patanjali's yoga sutras in the last class and we were going through the very first sutra that is tapasvadhyayeshwara pranidhana ani kriya yoga that was the sutra we were seeing so in that uh, we have almost completed uh, we may uh, just reread the last two lines just to recapitulate the point is when the kriya patanjali is talking about what is called kriya yoga kriya the word kriya itself we know the kriya kriya and karma they are almost similar and this is basically a purifying activity kriya yoga is basically a purifying activity so just to recall uh, the first adhyaya the commentator also said vyasa and all other commentators they have pointed out that the first adhyaya that it is um, samadhi pada is for somebody who is already having a disciplined mind so for him okay this is these are the various levels of samadhi so the, all those were described and the second pada is for some, for somebody someone who is uh, having a vikshipta chetas that is who, whose mind is tossed about uh, vikshipta what did he say so who vyuthita chitta vyuthita chittasya so that is vithana vithana is just always in the um, i mean uh, outward bound or rather extrovert uh, type of um, behavior so such a person so what about him so how does he how will he bring his mind under control if he wants to attain samadhi what are the exercises he has to do so consciously he has to cultivate certain basic principle in uh, yoga he is that certain conscious practices may, made by us will bring about changes in the unconscious mind so consciously we are creating certain positive samskaras which will neutralize the negative samskaras so that is the crux of it so kriya yoga is almost similar to karma yoga karma yoga in the gita uh, it it also talks about chitta shuddhi only karma yoga basically talks about chitta shuddhi kriya yoga is talking about one more point ishvara pranidhana karma yoga also that ishvara arpana buddhi is very much there but in addition to that there is some element of bhakti also here in this particular thing so it is almost almost the same as karma yoga which we see so let us uh, see the text i will just share, i'll just share the text this was the sutra we were reading tapasvadhyayeshwara pranidhana ani kriya yoga so we saw these words tapaha swadhyaya ishvara pranidhana what exactly are these and he made a, he also gave a caution patan vyasa gave a caution that this uh, tapa this uh, tapas should not be performed in a highly strenuous way, way. that is na atyashna tasu ko yogosti na ja ikanta manasna tah so you have to avoid all excesses in uh, any type of austerity that is people standing on one toe and doing tapas for a long long time and then people who are totally giving up food and then um, uh, doing some practice so all these ex- uh, excesses have to be avoided this is what he was saying tachya chitta prasadanam abadhamanam anena asevyam iti manyate tat cha tat that is that is referring to the tapas that particular tapas chitta prasadanam abadhamanam without straining the mind too much you are not supposed to strain and then uh, cause a disturbance in the mind if there is a disturbance in the mind because of uh, so many external factors there can be uh, no samadhi so the mind has to be calm chitta prasadanam abadhamanam anena anena means by the sadaka asevyam asevyam means means anushtatavyam it has to be uh, performed or it has to be practiced anushtatavyam iti manya asevyam iti manyate then swadhyaya what is swadhyaya he explained that is pranavadi pranava adi adi means not only omkara but other things other things like related mantras it may be purusha sukta uttara narayanam any any other thing and uh, pavitranam japah pavitranam mantranam japah moksha shastra adhyayanam va moksha shastra that is study of vedanta that is upanishads then ishvara pranidhanam sarva kriyanam parama gurau arpanam ishvara arpana buddhi this is what exactly is ishvara arpana buddhi also tat phala sanyaso va 
that is relinquishing the fruit of that particular action, very clearly referring to Karma Yoga. Then we come to the next sutra. Uh, this first sutra we read in the last class. Then Sahi Kriya Yoga, that particular Kriya Yoga, what is the purpose of it? What is the purpose of Kriya Yoga? So he is explaining Samadhi Bhavanartha Klesha Tanukaranarthascha. Samadhi Bhavanartha. Artha, artha means Prayojanam. Artha here is what is the object? What is the prayojana? Purushartha, we say. Purushaihi arthyate, iti purushartha. So that here it is, samadhi bhavanartha. Samadhi bhavana eva tasya prayojanam. Uh, samadhi bhavana. Bhavana means bringing about. Bhavana, to bring it into existence. To bring it into existence, that is bhavana. Bhūdhātu, same bhūdhātu. Bhavana, depending on the sentence, bhavana means, okay, my idea, something like that. Bhavana. So here, bhavana is, in Mimams also it is used in a similar sense, that is to bring about a particular effect, bringing about a particular effect, bhavana, arthi bhavana, saham, uh, yeah, uh, what is that bhavana, uh, anyway, I forget that word, um, uh, that, uh, that those two bhavanas, which Mimams class also explained, that is bringing about a thing. So samadhi bhavana artha, the artha or the purpose of this, uh, this uh, kriya yoga is to bring about this sadhana. Then, uh, klesha tanu karanarthasya. Klesha anam tanu karanam. Klesha. We are going to see next to uh, this word klesha right from the beginning. Right from the beginning, that is right from past chapter. We have been seeing the word klesha. Pancha klesha we have been seeing. And also klishta. Klesha is that uh, aberration of mind, that affliction of mind, or that um, erroneous perception, whatever you may say. Klishta is the adjective, adjectival form for the klesha. Klishta. Klesha, klishta. Klishta is something which is associated with klesha, is called klishta. So, klishta, klishta, that also we saw in the very first uh, chapter. What is that sutra? Vrutaya, uh, panchataya, klishta, klishta. There was one sutra like that. Klishta, klishta. That is those which are associated with klesha, those which are not associated with klesha. And in that context, I also made a reference to what Valmiki talks about Rama. Valmiki, uh, quite uh, in several places, he referred to Rama as Aklishta Karmana, Ramayana Aklishta Karmana, Athava Ramasya Aklishta Karmana. So Rama is called a person who is Aklishta Karma, that is, whose actions are totally devoid of uh, the kleshas, five kleshas, Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Dvesha, Adhinivesha. And Avidya is that philosophical ignorance which we are going to see now. So Samadhi Bhavanartha, Klesha Tanu Karana. Tanu Karana means Making it thin, tanu, tanu means thin, tanu and thin, probably are uh, most probably cognate words. Tanu, that is uh, very thin. Tanu karanam means making it thin, that is attenuating. So attenuating this kleshas, tanu karanarthascha, this is one purpose. So the purpose of Kriya Yoga is to enable the yogi to achieve samadhi and to attenuate the afflictions such as avidya. Then, uh, yeah, the positives, yeah, for the point to be noted is the positive samskaras, they neutralize the negative ones. That is the basic principle in yoga. Then sahi, as it is almost the same thing which the present day uh, psychologists also do. That is uh, de-addiction. Okay, what do, how do they do it? De-addiction, de-addiction, and again this um, mindfulness meditation. And of course, de-addiction is a, another particular different stage. Mindfulness meditation. In mindfulness meditation, they are asked, we are asked to examine our own um, thoughts, our own predicament. So that is what we do. So the positive samskaras have to be created deliberately in order to neutralize the negative ones. Sahi asevya manaha. Sa, sa is saha kriya yoga. Asevya manaha means anushthiya manaha. That is why, by, while being practiced. Samadhim bhavayati. Samadhim bhavayati means it brings about, it brings about the samadhi. Kleshanscha pratanu karoti. Kleshanscha and also kleshas pratanu karoti. Pra, prakarshena tanu karoti. That is totally, very effectively, very effectively attenuates the klesha. So that is Kriya Yoga's importance. Tapaha swadhyaya Kriya Yoga. Tapaha, in fact, in the last class I referred to the Gita's chapter, chapter 17 of Gita, where Krishna has devoted about seven, uh, six slokas to tell about tapas. That is Vachika Tapas, Kaika Tapas, and Manasa Tapas. Then again, Satvika, Rajasa, Tamas. Uh, what type of tapas we have to cultivate and then how it has to be done, etc. 
so that 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 is a sort of that is a great purifying experience in fact of us it can be done by all of us it is not meant for somebody who has to go to the forest and do it it is the basis something which is meant for all of us it is a sort of self restraint austerity so that this tapas is going to pratano karoti prakashena the negative activity the, the negative temperaments and negative uh, kleshas they are so thoroughly weakened then pratano krutan kleshan prasankhyana agnina dagdha bija kalpan aprasava dharmina karishyan karishyati this kriya yoga he is going to uh, do something else something more to these kleshas what is it going to do this kriya yoga prathanu karan prathanu krutan kleshan so these kleshas which have already been attenuated so those kleshas what is it going to do dagdha bija kalpan karishyati that is it is going to roast it dagdha bija dagdha bija bija is a seed dagdha bija is something like a roasted seed a seed usually normal seed has got the capacity to sprout that life giving that uh, reproducing ability is there so here what is it going to do dagdha bija kalpa so this bija that is uh, the uh, uh, that shakti which is there that innate potential which is there to reproduce that innate potential is totally killed it is totally roasted it is totally eliminated dagdha bija kalpa am karishati prasang by what prasangyana agnina what is the fire there Uh, outside there is some hacker eh huh? what to do uh, close all the door uh, close all the windows but still the hackers prasankhyan uh, agnina that is agni agni what is the fire the fire of knowledge everywhere knowledge is compared to the fire jnana agni dagdha karmanam we see there are there also jnana agni dagdha karmanam we say gita also says so prasankhyan agnina aprasava dharmina karishyati that is uh, usually this uh, kleshas they are prasava dharmina prasava dharmina prasava is to give birth to something new prasava is delivery delivery is the normal meaning of prasava is okay a lady uh, has a prasava means she delivers a baby so that is uh, that reproductive ability so here the kleshas usually they are, they have all that prasava they are they are the prasava dharmina they have that reproductive ability so now that the seed they are like roasted seeds they are made like roasted seeds then they cannot produce any other um, consequence there is no consequence of them so aprasava dharmina so they are so totally roasted that they cannot produce any negative impact, any negative uh, samskaras in the mind prathanu karvam prathanu krutan klesham this when this kriya yoga attenuates this thing not only does it do prasankhyana agnina kriya yoga itself does not uh, totally uh, eliminate it and kriya yoga mainly attenuates here there is a slight difference which he is showing that is kriya yoga is attenuating the kleshas whereas prasankhyana agni is directly roasting it away so there are two aspects here kriya yoga is making it thin and once the enemy is weakened that fellow is totally roasted so that is being done by prasankhyana agni the fire of knowledge so prasankhyana agni na dagdha bija kalpan aprasava dharmina karishyati that is aprasava dharma means totally non productive non reproductive sorry <laughs> reproductive aprasava dharmi prasava itself is its dharma its property its property is to reproduce but now the prasankhyana agni has also come it has also joined and it is i think i have to drive away that uh, agar yeah i'm sorry this is again a klesha small klesha so pratanu pratanu krutan kleshan so the kriya yoga is weakening the attenuating the uh, se kleshas and prasankhyana agni is totally destroying it they are totally roasting them then yeah that's what i have noted kriya yoga attenuates makes them non reproductive uh, no and knowledge yeah knowledge makes them non reproductive so then 
yeah i also mentioned to the third eye of shiva the third third eye of shiva what is the third eye of shiva third eye is the eye of knowledge not a physical eye or something uh, third eye of shiva that is destroys kama that is a person who is having that uh, knowledge so knowledge means that atma gyana one who is in that brahmanubhuti he is not um, tempted by this kama so that is where kama is figuratively he is destroyed there so that is what we see in that kama dahana so tesham tanum karanat punah leshaihi aparamrushta sattva purusha anyata matra khyati sukshma pragnya samapta adhikara pratiprasavaya kalpishyata iti tesham tanum karanat by their uh, thinning away by their attenuation tanum karanat by their attenuation kleshaihi aparamrushta sattva purusha anyata matra khyati so this khyati uh, khyati means awareness that knowledge what type of awareness sattva purusha anyata matra khyati that is the knowledge of the distinction between sattva sattva is the mind and also we can take body mind complex the body mind complex and the purusha purusha that sentient entity is different and all other thing is drushyam purusha alone is the seer and all else is seen that is drushyam so sattva purusha anyata khyati ki that khyati is something which is just untouched by all this klesha klesha hi aparam rushta sukshma pragnya sukshma pragnya is that uh, very very sakhi that uh, knowledge and that uh, knowledge samap sukshma pragnya samapta adhikara and samapta adhikara samapta adhikara is what is this adhikara means the mind has that ability to that um, uh, dharma its usual, <coughs> usual property is to go out it is usual property is to be extrovert in nature to go about that is bahirmukha and now that mind is no longer bahirmukha that is samapta adhikara its operation is totally samapta that is it has come to an end so let us see pratiprasavaya kalpishyate pratiprasavaya kalpishyate so this prasava and pratiprasava or words which are used in um, this way in yoga text so, prasava is uh, the one uh, klesha producing another klesha one klesha leading to strengthening of another klesha so avidya smita raga dvesha one supporting the other going on creating more and more worldly bondages so pratiprasava is the opposite of it pratiprasava is now if you visualize that evolution evolution from prakriti prakute he mahan mahata hankara etc etc from down to our body mind complex now by our uh, dhyana by our meditation we are resolving the effect into the cause we are resolving effect into the cause which is called laya 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 the process of laya and in vedanta also we see pancha kosha pravilapa the five koshas one into the other one into the other it is as though you are putting one into another sheet that entire thing is into another sheet so like that so that is pravilapa so finally you are left with only that supreme reality that is atma so here also we are uh, doing this pravilapa right up to pradhana right up to pravida pradhana and then when the yogi realizes that it is his self is not that body mind complex then he remains as pure purusha so that is what we see the slight difference between yoga and philosophy and vedanta so tesham tanu karana by their attenuation the pure awareness of the distinction of mind and purusha that is sattva purusha anyata matra khyati which is very subtle knowledge sukshma pragnya remaining untouched by afflictions kleshaihi aparamrushta so this kleshaihi ki apara kleshaihi aparamrushta has to be connected to sukshma pragnya sukshma pragnya which is kleshaihi aparamrushta then that will facilitate pratik prasava pratik prasava is that is uh, getting back resolving back into the original cause having neutralized the worldly functions of the mind that is samapta adhikara so that means all the worldly functions of the mind are neutralized then yeah, i have given a small note here prasava means delivery usually of a baby in sankhya it is a sequential process of evolution of universe uh, universe and beings from prakriti pratik prasava is the reverse of evolution it is not a physical process but a meditative exercise by which the yogi examines the cause effect relationship and goes to the root of creation it is a mental process of resolving the effect into the cause 
it is similar to what Vedanta calls the resolution of uh, the five sheets, that is Panchakosha Pravilapa. It is something similar. Uh, this Pratiprasava is the same as Panchakosha Pravilapa. Mm, not exactly same, similar. <laughs> same, it, here we are not talking about Koshas. Here we are talking about a different thing. So then, the next sutra is Atha ke te, atha ke kleshaha, kiyantaha, kiyantova, iti, ke te kleshaha. What are those kleshas? Kiyantaha. Kiyantaha means how many? Then now he is uh, giving. All the while we have been talking about klesha, kleshta, etc. Now he is giving the list. What is that list? Avidya smita raga dvesha dhinivesha klesha. There is a long um, Bahupada dvandva samasa, or itaretara dvandva samasa. Avidya asmita. Raga, Dvesha, Abhinivesha, Klesha. So this Avidya, Avidya, we should not be, uh, we should not feel offended when somebody, when somebody says Avidya, we are all having Avidya, because it, we are talking, it is talking about the philosophical ignorance. That is, my real self is that I am Brahman. According to Vedanta, my real self is I am Brahman. But I feel that I am so and so, I am having a, my social identity, Social identity is very much needed because if I go abroad, I need a visa, I need some passport and all the documents and all those things, they have to be very perfect. But then, that is only for that purpose. But my real nature is, I should be always aware that I am that not different from that uh, Brahman. So here also, we see the yogi, who a realized yogi, he also realizes that he is that Purusha, Swarugi, the real nature is that Purusha. So, but he doesn't, we don't know, we don't do like that. And even if we study Vedanta, the moment we, we see some hacker, we get, we feel angry, we get out. So, something like that. So, um, we identify with the body-mind complex. So, the identification with the body-mind complex and losing the uh, knowledge of our real nation. So, that is what is ignorance. Now, asmita, asmita arises only because of that. Because of that um, uh, lack of, um, say, I mean, not continuously staying in that awareness. So that is leading to asmita. Yes, I, I, that notion. In Vedanta, they give the example of a huge wave in an ocean. That huge wave develops the notion, yes, I have got a shape, I, I, that notion of I develops in that. So that is that Ishvara. So like that, that asmita. Then raga, dvesha, these are all very, very common terms. Raga, that is attachment. Then Vesha, the likes and dislikes. Then Abhinivesha. Abhinivesha is again, uh, that is clinging on to life. That is fear of death. Fear of death is something which is a klesha. That is what the Yaksha Prashna also, Dharmaraja tells. What is the greatest wonder? And the greatest wonder is we see people all around us dying, particularly in these corona times. Of course, we have to take precautions, not as though we should be suicidal in nature. But that fear of death need not be there. Fear of death, extreme fear of death, is, it will cause further disturbance of mind. It will further disturb or disturb our judgment, mar our judgment. So that is what. So fear of death. They are the. They, these are the five afflictions. These are all the. These are the five aberrations of mind. Avidya, egoism, attachment, hatred, and clinging to life are the five aber afflictions of the mind. Klesha iti pancha viparyaya hityarthaha. Viparyaya. Viparyaya is viparyayo mitya jnana madadrupa pratishtam. We saw that sutra in the first chapter. In the first chapter, there was a sutra about viparyaya. Um, uh, the, viparyayo mitya jnana madadrupa pratishtam. Erroneous cognition. Wrong knowledge. So, this wrong knowledge, how is it coming? Because of the primary ignorance. Because of the primary ignorance that uh, I am not aware, I am not um, aware that I, my real self is something different. So I, so I identify myself with whatever is the social identity. I belong to a particular caste, to a particular religion. I belong to, I have uh, whatever achievement, whatever degree, whatever qualification, my status, social status, and so on. So these are all the aberrations of my, the, that leads to further a strengthening of all other feelings. Oh, I am, I. Uh, belong to such a great uh, status and this man is insulting me. So something like that. I expect a lot of uh, courtesy, respect, demand, what not. So klesha, they are called afflictions as they are obstacles in the path of realization. 
then klesha the very word klesha klishnati that is it troubles us it gives us pain it gives us dukkham that is why they are called kleshas te spandamana gunadhikaram dradhayanti parinamam avasthapayanti karya karana srotaha srota unnamayanti srotam va gunadhikaram srotam it should be srotam let me see the bhashyam ಸ್ರೋತ ಕಾರ್ಯಕಾರಣ ಸ್ರೋತ 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 ಮೇ ಬಿ ದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ರೋತ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸ್ರೋತ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಎನಿವಿ ಚಕರ್ ತೇ ಸ್ಪಂದಮಾನ ಗುಣಾಧಿಕಾರ ದೃಢಯಂತೆ ಪರಿಣಾಮ ಅವಸ್ಥಾಪಯಂತೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕಾರಣ ಸ್ರೋತ ಉನ್ನಮಯಂತೆ ಪರಸ್ಪರಾನುಗ್ರಹ ತಂತ್ರೀ ಭೂತ್ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಪಾಕ ಅಭಿನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ that is the tenis this glaciers spandamana spadi spandana means becoming becoming active spandana you see spandana means spandana you can say in telugu that is spandana is uh, becoming strong by manifesting by clearly manifesting clearly operating spandamana gunadhikaram dradhayanti gunanam adhikaram gunanam adhikaram means the, the the potential of the three gunas Sattva Guna has a potential that is it enables a person to go in a particular direction. Rajo Guna uh, provokes a person to go in a particular direction. Tamo Guna also provokes, provokes a person to go in a particular direction. That is the Guna Adhikaram. Guna Adhikaram Dradhayanti. So these uh, Kleshas, they strengthen, they, uh, they in fact, they, they drive this Guna Adhikaram. In fact, they co-op, not only cooperate, they, they strengthen this Guna Adhikaram. then parinamam avasthapayanti parinamam is that constant change parinama is change that is you do some action again result action result action result that goes on changing and changing so parinamam avasthapayanti avasthapanam is more making it strong establishing that is avasthapana avasthapana is establishing it avasthapayanti karya karana srotaha unnamayanti karya karana srotaha action and action and result action and result here karya karana is not only cause and effect but action and result action and result you do some karma you get some result again do some karma get some result so that srotaha srota is that stream that stream unnamayanti namanam means to bend unnamanam means to rise up nama is to bend unnamanam is to just rise up unnamayanti means to enhance to re- to make it rise up that is karya karana srotah unnamayanti it is not reducing so all these kleshas they are going to strengthen the gunadhikara and then they they perpetuate the parinama they perpetuate that constant that action result action result cycle and then karya karana srotah unnamayanti then paraspara anugraha tantri bhutva paraspara mutually anugraha anugraha means supporting one one, one another ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಸಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಭೂತ್ವ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಲಿಟ್ರಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಚೈನ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ತಂತ್ರಿ ತಂತ್ರಿ ವಾದನ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ವೀಣಾ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಸೊ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ಚೈನ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ತಂತ್ರಿ ಭೂತ್ವ ಸೊ ದೇ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ಚೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ಚೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಪಾಕಂ ಚ ಅಭಿನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಪಾಕ ವಿಪಾಕ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ವಿಪಾಕ ಪಚ್ಯತೆ ಇತಿ ಪಾಕ ಪಚ್ಯತೆ ಪಚಧಾತು ಪಾಕಂ ಪಾಕ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಂತಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕುಕ್ಡ್ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಪಾಕಂ ದ ಅವರ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಕುಕ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಪಾಕಂ ಚ ಅಭಿ ನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ ಆಲ್ ಅಭಿ ನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ ಅಭಿ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಉಪಸರ್ಗ ಅಭಿ ನಿರ್ ಹರು ಹೃ ಇಸ್ ದ ಧಾತು ಹರಂತಿ ಹರಂತಿ ಹರಣ ಹರತಿ ಹರತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅವೇ ನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ ಸೊ ದೇ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಅಭಿ ನಿರ್ಹರಂತಿ ಅಭಿ ನಿರ್ ಹರಂತಿ ನಿಶ್ಚಯೇನ ಹರಂತಿ ನಿಶ್ಚಯೇನ ಅಹರಂತಿ that is they certainly bring about abhinirharanti they certainly bring about the fruit of our karma so the karma the karma action fruit action result action result the cycle is perpetuated so that is that enhancing the stream of cause and effect i have written cause and effect also means that is karma and the result karma phala as a mutually supporting chain they bring about the fruit of that karma spandamana then yeah the sutra is over yeah rama i refer to him rama atishta karma then avidya kshetram uttaresham prasupta tanu vichinno daranam so he is uh, talking about the uniqueness of avidya 
So we talked about, we saw the five, five kleshas. For these five kleshas, which is the primary, um, uh, primary realm, or, uh, which is the primary one, which is bringing about all other things. Sometimes all may be independent, but here all are not independent. All are dependent on one bad fellow. One bad fellow is creating many other things. That is avidya is the primary thing. And avidra, avidya is the kshetram. That is the place of origin, kshetram. You see, kshetram is what, what is kshetram? A field. In a field, you sow some seeds and then uh, you get the fruit, isn't it? So kshetram, avidya is the kshetram. That is the place of origin. That is the place of origin. Uttaresham. Uttaresham is for the later ones. Uttara. Purva, Uttara. Purva is earlier, Uttara is later. Uttaresham. That is for the later ones, for the latter, for the latter ones. Prasukta Tanu Vichinna Udharana. So these latter kleshas, that is Asmita Ragadvesha, they are in different levels. They are not always dominant. They are sometimes dominant, sometimes not dominant, sometimes dormant, so sometimes uh, disturbed. So they are in different conditions. So suppose I am now in a particular mood. This mood I will not be there always. Some raga, suppose attachment is there in a particular thing. So that mood, at that time, my dvesha for something else is attenuated. Suppose I am in a very happy mood. At that time, I have forgotten my anger with uh, somebody, uh, whoever is my, I don't know, whomever I don't like. So, or when I am very, very angry, then I, even if my child comes to me, I will just push him, push him out or push her out. So, that is one particular, sometimes these uh, kleshas, some may be dominant, some may be just dormant. So, they are in different levels, they are in different stages. So, that is what he is saying. Avidya Kshetra Uttaresham Prasupta Tanu Vichinna Udharana. These Prasupta Tanu Vichinna Udhara, they are the four stages of the kleshas. They are not they are not different kleshas. The same four kleshas are there apart from Avidya. Asmita Raga Dvesha Vinive. Avidya is always there. Avidya is a permanent factor. It is a permanent factor. And the other things are changing. Asmita Raga Dvesha Vinivesha. They are at a different levels. So these are in different levels. What are those levels? Prasupta level. Prasupta means prakashena supta. Totally dormant. Totally, absolutely dormant. Tanu. Tanu is a thin. Vichinna. Vichinna is, uh, Vichinna is something comes and then goes and some again comes and goes. Vichinna. Vichedha. Vichedha means that is something breaking. In the uh, even when we are talking on phone, it is uh, coming in, uh, just it gets broken in the middle. That is Vichinna. That is intermittent. That is uh, interrupted. Vichinna. Udara. Udara means quite active, quite dominant. Udara. Udara. Udara is something which is quite dominant. Udarana. So these four kleshas, again, they can be in four different levels. So the primary ignorance is the origin for the latter, which may be in dormant, weak, interrupted, or manifest condition or conditions also. We can say conditions. Uh, manifest conditions. They are in totally different conditions. Because we are referring to all the four uh, conditions. Then, ignorance is usually translated as nascence in English. Normally, avidya, we normally translate it as nascence. Okay, I we can also use that word if we want. This is the identification with the identification of self with the body-mind complex. My self means that my real self. I am identifying with the body-mind complex and also with the social identity. Then that is common to all living beings. The self is indeed the purusha, the sentient being. Then, atra avidya kshetram prasava bhumihi uttaresham asmitadinam chaturvidha vikalpanam prasupta tanu vichinna udharanam. So, atra, in this context, in this, uh, in this context, Avidya is Kshetram. Kshetram is the place of origin. That is Prasava Bhumihi, giving the meaning. Kshetram means Prasava Bhumihi. Vesa is giving the meaning. Kshetram Prasava Bhumihi, that is the point of uh, origin for Uttaresham, for the latter ones. What are they? Asmita Dinam, for Asmita, Raga, Dvesha, Vinivesha, etc. Prasava Bhumi, the place of origin is that because there is first erroneous cognition. So instead of going to Delhi, we have, instead of taking Delhi uh, highway, we have uh, taken Chennai highway. So once you have taken Chennai highway, we are going in that direction only. So that is Shetra Uttaresham. So that is the initial mistake. 
It is somewhat something that is something like original sin or something. So this is the Prasava Bhumi. That is the Prasava Bhumi, place of origin for the later, for the latter ones. Asmita Dinam and Chaturvidha Vikalpanam. That is the Chaturvidha Vikalpanam of Shetram. That is the Prasava Bhumi. What are these Vikalpas? Vikalpas means different stages. Different uh, Vikalpa actually means an alternative. Vikalpa is a sort of option or alternative. But here it is different stages. Chaturvidha Vikalpanam. What are they? Prasupta, Tanu, Vichinna, Udharana. Prasupta is something which is totally dormant, interrupt, weak, then interrupted or manifest condition. Tatra ka prasupti hi. What is that prasupti? Shetasi, Shetti matra pratishthanam, Bija bhava upagamaha. Shetti matra pratishthanam, Bija bhava upagamaha. So that is a state of dormancy means that is the existence in a potential form in the mind. That is Bija Bhava Upagamaha. Bija Bhava se praptihi. Bija Bhava Upagamaha means praptihi. Bija Bhava praptihi. That is just lying like a seed. It is there. It is there in the seed form. For example, we talk, I, I always give the example of the Trakta Bija. So that Vasana is there in a seed form. And once there is scope for that seed to rise up, the seed rises up. So it is like that. So existence in a potential form. Potential form, it is not, its Shakti is not gone away. Shakti is very much there. Shakti Matra Pratishthana. So this Shakti Matra, it is, it is there only. That Shakti is not gone. So it is then a potential form in the mind. Like that Bija Bhava Upagamaha. That is what is called Prasupti. So many of our uh, Raga, Dvesha, they are not always dormant. They are always, sorry, they are not always manifest. They are, most of the time they are dormant. It is only when we <coughs> come in touch with the object. Only when we come in touch with the object. Suppose my, I am having some sort of ill feeling against somebody that he is not always present in my mind. It is only when I see him, only when his uh, talk is brought about, uh, only when there is some discussion about him, then that prasupta uh, sa, uh, samskara, it rises up. Prasupta samskara can, becomes udara. Prasupta becomes udara. And again, some happy mood, that udara becomes prasupta. My hatred for that gentleman or my ex excess of attachment for something else, it becomes uh, prasupta. It is like that. Then, tasya prabodha alam, prabodhaha alambane sammukhi bhavaha. Tasya prabodhaha. So, tasya prabodhaha means, tasya means of what? We are talking about the kleshas. Prabodhasya klesha, prabodha, sorry, kleshasya prabodhaha. That is the awakening of that klesha. Awakening of that klesha, how does it happen? Alambane sammukhi bhavaha. Its awakening is its contact with the object. So when the contact is not there, quite often, unless I am such a bad person, always thinking about my enemies, Ushna uttame shanakopasyat, there is a shloka. Uttame shanakopasyat, madhyame ghatika dvayam. Adhame syad ahoratram papishthe varanantakam. So Papishta fellow, he is always thinking about his enemies, always thinking about how to destroy it. So um, unless it is like that, usually we forget. Usually we forget, dismiss so many things from our mind. So Prabodhaha, Alambane Sammukhi Bhavaha, that is, it, it gets in Sammukhi Bhavaha, Alambana means, there should be an Alambana, like in, um, like in uh, what is this, uh, Natya Shastra, we talk about Rasa Siddhanta. Rasa Siddhanta is, there is an Alambana Vibhava, Uddipana Vibhava and Alambana Vibhava. So Alambana Vibhava for the man and woman. The man is the Alambana Vibhava for the woman and the heroine Maika is the Alambana Vibhava for the man, for that Sungara Rasa to generate in their minds. So they should have, they should come together. Uh, so the, when the, the when heroine sees the hero or Nayaka sees the Naika or Naika sees vice versa. Then there is uh, that uh, feeling of love. And Uddipana, Uddipana means suppose there is some moonlight and then some nice uh, that um, spring season and whatnot. These are all the Uddipana we have. So it is somewhat similar. Alambana, Alambana is that support, that emotional, um, not emotional support. It is uh, that object which triggers that particular sentiment in you. So you saw, see your son, you immediately you have a gentle feeling. You see somebody else. Maybe some, some gentle or otherwise, whatever it is. So, alambana has to be there in order to uh, trigger a particular emotion. 
आलंबने सम्मुखी भाव है सम्मुखी भाव में कमिंग फेस टू फेस सम्मुखी करण मुख मुख इज फेस सम्मुखी करण में सम्मुख दैट इज फेस टू फेस सम्मुख इज फेस टू फेस सम्मुखी भाव है दैट इज कमिंग इन कांटेक्ट विद द ऑब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज द आलंबना दैट इज द सपोर्ट फॉर इट टू स्टैंड और आई कुड से सपोर्ट इंसटेड ऑफ सपोर्ट व्हिच ट्रिगर्स दैट पर्टिकुलर पैशन और इमोशन देन प्रसंख्यानवत दग्ध क्लेश बीज से सम्मुखी भूते आलंबने न असौ पुनरस्ति प्रसंख्यानवत प्रसंख्यानवान मीन्स पर्सन हू हेज नॉलेज संख्यान ख्याति प्रसंख्यानवान इज द पर्सन हू हेज दट नॉलेज दट इज दट विवेक ख्याति प्रसंख्यानवत मीन्स फॉर द पर्सन हू इज हेविंग दट विवेक ख्याति दग्ध बीज क्लेश से दग्ध क्लेश बीज से सो ही इज ऑलसो दग्ध क्लेश बीज बहुरी सामस दग्धा क्लेश बीज दग्ध बीज क्लेश दट इज वन फॉर इन इन हूज केस all those clashes they are burst they are not burst they are roasted one whose clashes have been roasted away that is dagdha bija dagdha bija dagdha klesha bija then samukhi bhute api alambane alambane samukhi bhute api that is sati uh, sabdami even if the alambana comes in front suppose i have vishwamitra does some tapas and he conquers raga dvesha and then all that dvesha for vasishta goes then vasishta and vishwamitra they become good friends so it is like that so all that samukhi bhute api alambane when that alambara has come close also then na asau punarasti the dvesha does not arise na asau punah asti asau means asau klesha we are referring to that klesha asya prabodha we are referring to klesha only na asau punarasti dagdha bijasya putah prarogaiti once it is roasted away where is again praroha praroha means sprouting sprouting where is the question of sprouting of a seed when that seed is already roasted then uh, even if yeah for the person who has attained knowledge even if the alambana comes into contact there is no awakening of klesha as it got roasted where is sprouting for a roasted seed then ataha kshina klesha कुशल शरम देहाण क्लेश दट इज वन पर्सन हूज क्लेश डिस्पियर्ड क्षीण क्लेश क्षय ग्षय ग्लेश सो दट इज पर्सन सच पर्सन सच पर्सन कुशल शरम देहाच्य हि इज कॉल्ड कुशल कुशल यू कैन ऑलसो रिलेट टू दट गीता वर्ड योग कर्मसु कौशल कुशल कुशल मीन हूज एक्शन आर ऑलसो Uh, they don't produce result he is the kushala kushala yoga karma su kushalam who is kushala kushala means whose actions do not produce any result so of course physical result will be there for him there is no papa punya he is not affected by the fruit it is not as though all his actions are failures so he is, he is very successful in the field from the point of view of all others but for him he doesn't get that papa or punya kushala sharama deha that is sharama deha sometimes we hear about this uh, we hear this word charama deha who oh, he is uh, an enlightened person that means he is that is the last body for him a person does not die immediately after enlightenment a person is uh, he, a person continues to exist so that is charama deha for him it is the last body because he is not going to his linga sharira according to vedanta his linga sharira disintegrates according to this uh, yoga sutra he has already detached he is already detached from that um, prakruti so he is staying with that pure awareness as purusha so there is no question of rebirth or anything so for him that is uh, charama deha charama deha vaityachyate tatraiva sa dagdha bija bhava panchami klesha avastha nan yatra iti tatraiva sa he is now talking about vyasa is talking about one more avastha one avastha means state vyasa patanjali talked about four stages that is prasupta tanu vichinna udara now in addition to that vyasa is talking about one more avastha that is uh, uh, dagdha bija bhava avastha dagdha bija avastha so that fifth stage that is the stage fifth stage is uh, in the case of a gnani in the case of a gnani we are also having that fifth stage four stages are there for all other people so but in the case of gnani that is the fifth stage सा 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 अवस्था सा सा इज रेफरिंग टू अवस्था 
Savasta, that is Panchami, Panchami Avasta. What is that Panchami Klesha Avasta? There are four Klesha Avastas called earlier. So now he is talking about the fifth Klesha Avasta. Na Anyatra, not in any other case. So it is only in such person that the Kleshas are in the fifth state, that is the scorched state. Dagdavija, Dagdavija was the scorched, scorched state, like scorched earth policy. Scorched state, but not elsewhere. It is not elsewhere. Then, Satam Kleshanam Tada Bija Samarthyam Dadhamiti. What is this line? Satam Kleshanam Tada Tada Bija Samarthyam Dadhamiti. Vishayasya Samukhi Bhavepi. Vishayasya Samukhi Bhavepi Sati. Navavati Esham Prabodaha. It Yukta Prasub Prasupti. Dadha Bijanam Apra Rohasya. Same thing he is telling in different words. <coughs> Satam Kleshanam Tada Tada in that particular stage Tada Satam Kleshanam even when these Kleshas are there but they are Bija Samarthyam Dagdham they are physically they seem to be there Bija Samarthyam Dagdham their cap capability to reproduce that is so totally burst away Vishayasya Samukhi Bhavepi that is even when the object even when that Alambana comes near even when that Alambana comes close Vishayasya Samukhi Bhavepi Sati even when the object is there, na bhavati esham prabodaha. Desham, tesham, kleshanam, prabodaha, na bhavati. These kleshas, they do not rise up again. Then it yukta prasupti hi, dagdha vijanam apra rohasya. So that is prasupti. That is what then it is told as dharmansi. It yukta prasupti hi, dagdha vijanam apra rohasya. So he is talking about the fifth stage. We are not talking about the earlier stage, Prasupta Tanu Vishnavadara. We are not talking about that. He is talking about that Prasupti in the case of a Jnani. In the case of a Jnani, what is happening? In the case of, it, it is told as dormancy in the case of others and non sprouting in the case of scorched kleshas. That is Prasupti hi Bhavatyesha Prabhoda. Ityukta Prasupti hi. Dagdha bijanam prasupti prasupti hi there should therefore be a comma here. It yukta prasupti hi. Dagdha bijanam apra rohasya. Dagdha bijanam is referring to the people. Dagdha bijanam purushanam. That is dagdha bijanam. Klesha also we can take. Dagdha bijanam. That is in the case of those people whose kleshas have been totally burst away. Apra rohaha. Praroham is sprouting. Apraroham is non sprouting. Non sprouting of the actions. Aprarohasya. Then, yeah, yeah, what I have written. In that stage, as the reproductive ability of the klesha seeds is burnt away, that is, bija samarthyam dagdhamiti, then even if the mind comes in contact with the object, that is, vishayasya sammukhi bhave visati. Na bhavati esham prabodhaha ityukta prasuttihi. Ityukta. Then, then they are not reawakened. Hence, it is told as dharmansi in the case of others. In the case of others, it is called dharmansi ityukta prasuttihi. Dagdha bijanam apra rohascha. And non sprouting in the case of scorched kleshas. Tanutva muchyate. Tanu. Prasutta tanu. We are now coming to the second stage, that is tanutva. Tanu means thinning. Pratipaksha bhavano pahata, um, upahataha, kleshaha, tanavo bhavanti, tanavaha, tanavu tanu tanavaha, tanavaha bhavanti, pratipaksha bhavano pahataha, pratipaksha bhavana. This is again a very important idea in both in Vedanta and in um, yoga. Generally, in all uh, spiritual exercises, pratipaksha bhavana is uh, very much um, needed. In fact, Pratipaksha Bhavana, one great example for Pratipaksha Bhavana will be the Vairagya Shataka of uh, Bhartruhari. Bhartruhari, you know, he has written three Shatakas, Shingara, sorry, uh, Neeti Shataka, Shingara Shataka, and Vairagya Shataka. So if you take the Vairagya Shataka, and also Shingara Shataka, also in some places, in fact, Bhartruhari, Shingara Shataka, I feel it is a sort of misnomer. So even in the Shingara Shataka, the description of that Shungara is done in such a way that it evokes Vairagya. Description of Shungara is not for the sake of strengthening Shungara, it is for the sake of de developing Vairagya. So they are, they are there also, this Pratipaksha Bhavana is there. Pratipaksha Bhavana is, suppose I look at uh, something, some attractive thing, and then I, my mind gets attracted. 
then it, sadhaka if he goes after that then of course he is he is going and then he is um, having his uh, happy time but then a sadhaka is not supposed to do that a sadhaka he is somebody who is withdrawing and then who is um, uh, having uh, he is doing the pratyahara that is indriyas he is pulling back so for him pratipaksha bhavana is needed so if you go to bhartu hari for example uh, he talks about uh, uh, when he, when he is talking about women for example he says kante ti utpalalochane ti vipula shroni bhare ti unnam tinotunga payo dhare ti sumukham bhoje ti subhuriti gosan ti gosan like that shloka what does it mean so a person pursues a woman kanta iti oh so beautiful so attractive utpalalochane ti oh her her like eyes are so beautiful utpala they are like utpala flower then uh, vipula vipula shroni bhara her lips are so nice and then her body is so good and then subhru sumukham bhoje ti her face is so so nice and then subhru that bro is so bro is so beautiful etc etc of course all this applies to man also if a woman is a seeker naturally she has to think about this in the in the case of a man the man is supposed to think in the case of a woman so bhartru hari uh, so he has he writes like that so saying that is all pratipaksha bhavana ಉತ್ಪಲೋಚನೆ ಸುಖಾಂ ಭೋಜಯತಿ ಉತ್ಕೃಷ್ಟ ಮುಖ್ಯತಿ ಮೋಹತೆ ಅವಿರಮತೆ ಪ್ರಸ್ತೌತಿ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಅಪಿ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ತೌತಿ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಅಪಿ ಈವನ್ ಎಸ್ ಲರ್ನೆಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಈವನ್ ಎ ಲರ್ನೆಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹಿ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಅಶುಚಿ ಭಸ್ತ್ರಿಕಾಂ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯ ಮಹೋ ಮೋಹಸ್ಯ ದುಶ್ಚೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಅಶುಚಿ ಭಸ್ತ್ರಿಕ ಸೊ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ದುಮನ್ಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅಶುಚಿ ಭಸ್ತ್ರಿಕ ಈಸ್ ಎಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಎ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲ್ತ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ it is a shack of filth he says ashuchi mastrikam striya maho mohasya dushcheshtitam he says so like that if you see the shringara sataka and vairagya sataka patrahari you find this pratipaksha bhavana any number of examples for pratipaksha bhavana so pratipaksha bhavana is contemplating on the the negative not that uh, if i pursue that i may get beaten or something like that not that sort of pratipaksha bhavana the bad things the bad consequences and also the re- not even the bad consequences but the reality of it what is that reality in reality what is that so it is that's not that is the pratipaksha bhavana anutva muchyate pratipaksha bhavano upahata pratipaksha bhavanaya upahata pratipaksha bhavanaya upahata that is uh, those which are suppressed by the um, contemplation of the negative aspects of sense objects and klesha tanavah bhavanti they become Uh, thin or attenuated. Yeah, Bhartra Hari is very angry. Even Shungara Shataka also you can take. Even Shungara Shataka. The shloka which I quoted is from Shungara Shataka. From a, from a section called Kamini Darhanam. That is the section. So, Tada Vichidya Vichidya Tena Tena Atmana Punah Punah Samudasha Ranti Iti Vichinna Now that Tanu Karanaha is over. now he is talking about uh, vichinna prasukta tanu vichinna udara isn't it the third level that is vichinna what is that vichinna vichinna is uh, i am having i am in a particular mood now suddenly something comes up uh, and then my mood uh, from this it shifts into another mood again when that particular thing goes away again i go back to that so that is vichidya vichidya that is interrupted so tada tatha tatha means likewise vichidya vichidya this is scattered instead of scattered i can say interrupted or um, yeah scattered or interrupted vicheda vicheda means breaking um, vichedana means vicheda means breaking vichidya vichidya means in uh, in um, uh, yeah intermittent uh, in an intermittent manner interrupted manner so the scattered kleshas are those which uh, though being interrupted vichidya vichidya tena tena atmana punah punah samada tena tena atmana means in its own original strength in their own original strength they come back tena tena atmana in their own original strength they come back samuda acharanti samyak ut acharanti means they rise up again and again with the same vigor that is samuda acharanti idi vichinna so the scattered kleshas are those which though being interrupted come back with original vigor again and again once that vicheda is over because i am in a particular frame of mind that gets disturbed again i come to the same frame of mind vyasa is giving some examples here some routine day to day example katham 
Ragakale Krodhasya Darshanat. Ragakale. When I am having um, uh, some nice feeling, um, nice feeling, uh, playing with my children or uh, sitting with my wife or some Ragakala, and I could mood rather. Ragakale Krodhasya Darshanat. Krodha is something which is not seen there. Nahi Ragakale Krodha Samudhacharati. Ragakale Krodha Na Samudhacharati. Uh, anger does not arise when raga is in operation. So, kleshas in operation suppress kleshas of a different nature. So, here, of course, uh, he is giving an example. Ragascha is the time over. Oh, there are some more, there's uh, a few more lines. Maybe we can take up uh, tomorrow in the next class because uh, I can't complete all these lines today. This, I think I'll, we can stop here. He's just giving another example. When Raga is there, then there cannot be Dvesha. There, for interruption, he is going to give an example. So we'll see it in the next class. Are there any, is there any discussion, please? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I'm just looking for the questions. There are no questions, I'm here, but... No question, no problem. Uh, Arun Kumarji and uh, Pujaji they are saying thank you, sir, for the wonderful class. Very insightful session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Om Tatsat.